Hi students, this is chapter 5, lesson 7. This is the last lesson in chapter 5. Uh, lesson 7 uh, has a lot of similarity to lesson 6. Just like lesson 6, if you choose to take notes on a piece of grid paper, uh, it because we're making coordinate planes, that might be the best choice. But you don't have to. You could use your comp book. You could also use a regular standard Cornell note page. Okay, lesson seven. Uh, title of lesson seven, what you'll be able to do uh, after lesson seven is be able to graph on the coordinate plane. Uh, all right, first thing we're going to talk about. I've already made a coordinate plane. Um, and I'm going to make our guide here for ordered pairs. This we did in lesson six as well, but I'm just going to put it up here because it's such a big idea. Ordered pairs. When you are putting ordered pairs on the coordinate plane, it is always this pattern. It is always x value first, y value second. And the x value always tells you to go right or left, right if it's positive, left if it's negative, and the second y value always tells you up if it's positive, down if it's negative. Always, always, always that pattern. So I'm going to label my axes. This is x. This is the y axis. This is positive in this direction negative x in this direction, positive y in this direction, and negative y in this direction. Just to recap as well, our quadrants, quadrant 1, quadrant 2, 3, and 4. And I'm going to highlight our guide, order to pair guide right here. And before I label my coordinate plane, uh, many of you have had this discussion on lesson six. You, it's up to you how you want to label your coordinate plane. But the thing is, whatever you decide, it has to be consistent in all directions. Here's what I mean. I could count one unit per one box. I could do one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's usually what you've seen. I, if I did that, I would have to count the, the same in all directions. One, two, three, four, five, and negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, and the same thing down. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. But I don't have to count one box per one. I could, I might decide to count every four boxes and label that one. If I did that, I'd count one, two, three, four boxes and I'd label this two. So one, two, I might do that if I had uh, numbers in between like one and a half or two and one fourth. If I did label my, if I made that one, I would have to make this one, and then I would make that two. And if um, in this direction, I would have to label that negative one, and that would be negative two. Same thing in this direction. That would be negative one, that would be negative two. I could also make the interval much bigger. I could, I could make my intervals two boxes, and I could count by 50s. 50, 100, 150, 50, 100, 150, negative 50, negative 100, negative 150. So the point is, you decide the interval, that is the jump in between each amount, and you decide, uh, whatever you decide, it has to be consistent in all directions. So I am actually going to label this coordinate, I'm going to label every box. I'm going to put a mark at every box, but I'm not going to count by ones this time. I'm going to count by twos. So this would be two, four, six, eight, ten. And I have to be consistent in all directions. 
So this mark would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Same intervals in the negative direction and negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10, and the same intervals in the negative direction on the y-axis, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, and negative 10. All right, the first thing we're going to do is to graph the point A, and we're going to locate point A at 6, x value 6, y value 4. First number, x value, tells me right or left. I always start at the origin. I'm going to go positive 6, and then my y value is positive 4. I'm going to go up to 4. That is point A. Next, I'm going to graph point B. Point B will be located at the coordinates uh, negative 4, negative 4. Again, I start at the origin. Negative 4 x value moves me left. Negative 4 y value moves me down. Negative 4, negative 4 is in quadrant 3. And I'm going to label that point B. Okay, the next direction is we are going to reflect point B across the x-axis. So let me write that. Reflect B across x-axis. To make point C. Here's point B. Remember that reflect, you can think of when you see the word reflect, you are thinking fold across that axis. Reflect B across the x axis. Here's point B. Here is the x axis. So I am going to fold this way, like that. Here's point B. Imagine I fold point B across the x-axis. Where would B land? It's four units down, so it's going to be four units up. So point C would wind up being right there. Uh, the last thing we're going to do is connect A, B, and C, and, and see what shape is created. Well, if we connect our points correctly, if we graft our ordered pairs correctly, and then we connect them, We are going to have a triangle. There is our shape. So the answer to if you connected or if you plotted the ordered pairs correctly following these directions and then we connect them, the answer is you would have a triangle. Okay, last thing we're going to do is look at distance between two ordered pairs. Um, graph point D. And D we will locate at 9, negative 8. 9, negative 8. So, where does that belong? Positive 9. I always start at the origin. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 9 is going to be right in the middle of 8 and 10. Negative 8, y value. I'm going to go over to 9 and down to 8. 
So I'm going to be in between these two points, or in between these two intervals at, at 9, and then on this one at negative 8. So point D would wind up being right there. And next, we're going to reflect again. We're going to reflect D across the y-axis to make point F. Again, reflect, think, fold. Fold across whatever axis is it's asking you to. Here I am, here is the y-axis. I am going to fold on that y-axis. And uh, here I am at point D. I'm going to fold across the y-axis, folding on the y-axis. And point D is going to land right there. So that is where, actually it's going to be right in between. Here is, D is in between 8 and 10. So over here, when I fold, it's going to be in between negative 8 and negative 10. Right there is where point F would land. Again, that's point D reflected across the y-axis. All right, so now we're going to look at what is the distance between D and F? What is the distance between D and F? Question mark. So to look at that, I could think, how far is it from the y-axis over to D? And that is 9 units. It is also 9 units from F to the y-axis. So I've got 9 units here, 9 units there. All together, if I connect, if I draw a line, finding the distance, between F and D. The distance between F and D would be 9 units, another 9 units. The answer would be 18 units between D and F. So again, a lot of similarities to Lesson 6. Ordered pairs, graphing on the coordinate plane, reflecting, think, folding across whatever axis it's being given. And the intervals, uh, know that those can change. It's up to you when you're, when you're graphing on your own what intervals you want to make. And that about does it for Lesson 7, except for the Hidden Treasure Puzzle. Again, uh, you need to solve the puzzle, uh, have all Chapter 7 notes, and complete the assignment to win Hidden Treasure Puzzle. Here is Chapter 5, Lesson 7, Hidden Treasure Puzzle. What does that, what word or phrase does that represent? That does it. Lesson 7. Next time I see you, we will be talking on a new chapter, Chapter 6. I'll see you soon.